What if I told you that whoever wins the battle between these two coins is going to be the permanent leader in crypto and a coin that you certainly would not want to miss out on. Today, we're going to take a look at Charles Hoskinson slamming Ethereum and Vitalik and what that means for their beef going forward. Let's get it. Welcome to Bitcoin Crypto. My name is Ben. Make sure to smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel because if you don't, you're a loser. I'm serious. All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about Charles Hoskinson. We're going to be talking about Ethereum. We're going to look at staking. Some comments said by Brian Armstrong. And is this the end of staking as we know it? Well, you have to watch the video to find out. So here we go. Charles Hoskinson, the most intimidating man in crypto, bar none. Look at those eyes. He's got hungry eyes. So let's check this out, what he had to say here recently. Cardano Network has always been a fierce competitor of the Ethereum network. Naturally, this is translated into a prolonged rivalry between the two communities and the two blockchains. Who is the Ethereum community? We know the Cardano community is not the Ada gang. I apologize for this shirt. Check this out down here. Hoskinson only spent six months at Ethereum almost a decade ago. I didn't know he was only there for six months. That's pretty crazy. I thought certainly he was there longer than that. Ethereum community continues to ignore the advances that the Cardano network has made over the years. They just say, oh, you know what? It's vaporware. It's not going to go anywhere. And yet, it just keeps continuing to press on. It's a crime on that side of the fence to even mention Cardano. That's what Charles Hoskinson tweeted. He knows there is deep beef and deep drama between these two projects. And I believe these are the two projects with the most potential in pretty much all of crypto. We don't need to hate anyone or develop bizarre conspiratorial thinking in order to accomplish our goals. The reality is Cardano doesn't need cryptocurrency to be successful in order for it to succeed. Charles has always looked at Google as his competitor, not Vitalik and Ethereum. But yeah, he's always got some very interesting comments for him. So I don't know. Uh, here's Brian Armstrong, Uncle Brian here. He says, we're hearing rumors that the SEC would like to get rid of crypto staking in the US for retail customers. I hope that's not the case, as I believe it would be a terrible path for the US if that was allowed to happen. So here we have Brian Armstrong introducing this conflict onto Twitter about the SEC potentially going after staking in the United States. But the question is, is it going to be centralized staking, DeFi staking? What about a Cardano staking pool? It's hard to know exactly what he's referring to, definitely on centralized exchanges, but does it go further? And if it does, well, then that puts Ethereum and Cardano in the crosshairs, as they both use versions of proof of stake for their consensus mechanism. But when he tweeted this, this was just a rumor. Fast forward to the next day. SEC reaches $30 million settlement with Kraken. As part of the agreement resolving the charges, Kraken said Thursday in a blog post that on top of the $30 million payment, it would automatically unstake all US client assets that were a part of the program, and that its US customers would no longer be eligible to participate in staking. Staking and the associated rewards will continue to be offered for non-US customers. So just, we're left out. Thanks, Gary, appreciate that. Let's see here, staking is a really important innovation in crypto, Armstrong tweeted, allows users to participate directly in running open crypto networks. Staking brings many positive improvements to the space, including scalability. Staking is not a security. So we're not gonna get too much into uh, Kraken here and what happened, we, we talked about this last week, and it was Brian Armstrong's tweet about Kraken and the SEC that prompted him to make some pretty interesting comments about Ethereum staking. We'll look at it in just a second. But speaking of Ethereum staking, here is self custody versus non custodial. You guys can see here Bitcoin, Cardano, Ethereum. My opinion, these are the top three coins. They will be when the dust settles. But very interesting to look at the difference between Bitcoin and Cardano and Ethereum. 2022 reminded us that self custody is important. You control the private keys all the way across. You have custody of coins. Uh, Ethereum, they're locked up until at least the Shanghai update. Liquid, are they liquid? Well, no, because you don't have custody of them. You can't get them out. And then safe from slashing, well, also doesn't have that. Which you would think that probably most coins are not worried about getting killed in a slasher film. But, you know, whatever, I digress. The point is, a lot of the beef that some people are having with Ethereum right now in its staking program, part of the merge and ETH2, is that you're locked up, you can't get them off. Some people would say it's kind of like a Ponzi scheme. Now, there's a reason for that, 
and the people who put the money on there knew that this was going to be the case and they were eventually going to be able to get access to their funds once the network was up and running but still if you want to get your ethereum off right now and you're in a validator node you can't so therefore all of these coins are totally out of supply and cannot be moved around yes don't forget to check out bitboycrypto.com you want to check out all of our socials you want to check out our academy uh, don't forget to check out catching up to crypto you just hit book right there take it right there a couple more stops left on the first official run of the book tour book sale still going amazing you guys make sure to catch up to crypto by catching up to crypto here's what charles actually said about this ethereum staking is problematic temporarily giving up your assets to someone else to have them get a return looks a lot like regulated products slashing in bonds not so good non-custodial liquid staking on the other hand is like the mining pools we've used for 13 years so here charles is bragging to vitalik basically in the ethereum community that cardano has already been doing what ethereum is trying to do in the future cardano already with their staking pools solves all the problems custodianship uh being liquid the slashing the whole nine yards so when gary Gensler comes out against ethereum and says ah now it's proof of stake i don't know if it's good it, it's not proof of stake that's the problem it's the way that ethereum staking was set up and if you know anything about really ethereum or cardano they both take way longer to do the updates they say they're going to do than they said it was going to take we see it consistently uh, cardano running two or three months behind often um, ethereum pff, running years behind often so we already know that when ethereum holders were told that if they put their ethereum invalidator notes they would be able to get it out approximately this date they should have already known by the track record of ethereum it was going to take longer than that but a lot of people are really really upset about that and charles is really making the case for the sec here for ethereum would charles sell out ethereum and vitalik and help the SEC and give them a roadmap instead of fighting on behalf of crypto? I don't know. Great question. The blood runs deep there. Cardano founder Charles Hoskinson calls out Ethereum's staking problem. Locking funds, encouraging centralization, and poor protocol design hurts the whole industry. Improved stake protocols might get lumped together due to a fundamental misunderstanding about the actual facts of operation and the design of staking. It's spoken from someone who definitely knows, it's an expert in blockchain one of the original experts in blockchain charles hoskinson but he also knows he has a project and he needs this project to do better than ethereum he can tell you all day google's our competitor but if it can't pass ethereum whether it's in market cap or at least in users then how can it expect to take over google and there's a question we all need to think about ultimately at the end of the day a series of events i believe is going to occur in the next three years, Ethereum will pass Bitcoin in market cap. In the next six to eight years, Cardano or ADA will pass Ethereum in my mind. These are probably the golden days for Ethereum as the merge just kicked in. Inflation has turned to deflation with Ethereum. No longer is the lack of max supply a, a problem. Ethereum has great tokenomics and they're even better now. Cardano on the other hand, well, We've got the opportunity to see what it can really do in DeFi over the next year. The point is, both of these coins have great things about them. They have great things about their network. They have great leadership, great communities, great developers, great goals, great foundations. Really, they offer a lot of the same things. But at the end of the day, one of these projects will be the top layer one. Imagine you go to a horse race and you got a donkey, you got a mule, you got a zebra. You got a, a zonkey maybe out there. And then you got these two majestic racehorses. Now you've got to pick who you want to win. Well, they're both great. If you pick the wrong one, then you're going to lose. But if there's 16 horses in the race and you bet on both of the great looking horses, well, you're probably going to win no matter what. The point is this, if you're trying to pick between Ethereum and Cardano, between ETH and ADA, you don't have to. That's the lie that they tell you to believe. You should definitely, in my opinion, have both of these in your portfolio because one of them is gonna become the ultimate winner and you don't wanna bet on the wrong horse. All right, that's all I got. Be blessed. The boy out.